Hey everyone, my name is Jonathan Silva. Welcome back to my Power Automate Basics series. This is our second episode, Triggers. For this video, I'm gonna take a look at all of the trigger options you have available using Power Automate Cloud Flows to go ahead and kick off your flows to understand exactly how they can start and then what we can do with each different kind. So without further ado, I'm gonna head right into powerautomate.com, take a look at how we can get to our triggers, and then show you three different examples available to you to start using those triggers right away. All right, so here we are at powerautomate.com or flow.microsoft.com. And I'm, right now, I've just gone into my navigation area on the far left here for create. And once you select the create option, you can see all the ways to go ahead and create a flow from scratch, as well as all the different templates you can use that are already created. Now, check out my first video part of this series where I explore all these different templates, the types of templates, how to understand how to use templates, all of that's in that first video. But here we're gonna focus on, now that we have an option selected, what are the different triggers we can use in order to kick off these flows? And there are three main triggers that we use inside of Power Automate. These triggers are all located right here, the three different types of flows. We have an automated cloud flow that has triggered by a designated event, so an event cloud flow. We have an instant cloud flow, which is a manual trigger where you're just simply clicking a button. And finally, we have a scheduled cloud flow, which this is some type of recurrence trigger, okay? So each one of these is gonna set off your flow in a different way. And what I'm gonna do is take you through all three of these, show you an example of each and exactly how you can get this flow started for yourself. So if you wanna create a flow from scratch, just choose one of these and that's how you get into it. Again, you can also choose how to do that from a template. And you can see inside of your templates the type of trigger being used within that specific flow itself. You can see these first two that I've selected there in our templates are either an instant, okay, which is your manual trigger, or an automated, okay, which is gonna be your event trigger, right? You can even find in, as you search through your templates, your scheduled flat, uh, cloud flows, your recurring triggers along with them. All right, so let's take a look at our very first trigger type. And this trigger type is our event trigger, also known as an automated cloud flow. Now for this event trigger, what, for it to occur is some type of an event that starts in an outside service, some other service outside of Power Automate. For example, maybe you have a, a new row added to a SharePoint list or a new email that arrives in your inbox. And in fact, that's what this flow is based around where you have a new email arriving in your inbox here for Office 365. And when that occurs, once that email comes in, we now have an ability to save the attachments to OneDrive for Business. So what this flow is set up to do is to, every time we get that email, to go ahead and create a file in OneDrive, okay? And it'll also create a path for that file. This is the path name that's gonna be created. And then it's going to save within that file path, the file name and the content. Now what is also created within this is we have an apply to each loop because in some cases we may have multiple attachments within a single email. So it's gonna take each one of those attachments and create a new file for each of those. Okay, so that's what this is all about. That's what this one's gonna do. But if you look at the general structure of our flow right now, this very first part right here, this is our trigger. Now, this is the event that takes place in order for the rest of the flow for all of these other actions to actually occur. Okay, so every single flow will be started with some sort of trigger, some sort of event item, something that will then kick off the flow itself, initiate all the actions within the flow. So when you want to go ahead and use it, it's already set up for you. So again, that is our event trigger right there. 
So the event is when a new email arrives, we now have this trigger kicking off this flow that we've created. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at our second trigger type. The second trigger type that we have here, if I go over to my next example, is a manual trigger. Now, this is often one of the ones that we use quite a bit when we want to just have a, a flow initiated where we just want to choose when it goes out. We get to choose exactly the time, the, the specification, when this occurs because we are physically either pushing a button something maybe on our mobile device at the Power Automate mobile application, or you have some type of button or action from a Power App, from SharePoint, that you can design in order to kick off this flow. And once you go ahead and initiate that flow trigger by pushing that button, like a physical button in some cases, where you can even buy a, or set up a Bluetooth button to go ahead and, and, and actually kick off this flow. Once that happens, when you manually trigger this flow, you can then go ahead and set up all the actions after it. Now, one of the great things that occurs within the manual trigger itself is you can add in specific inputs here that you want to have to be used within that trigger itself as well. So you can designate the type of user input that is used within this in order for the flow to go ahead and kick off afterwards. But then when we look at this, if we don't wanna add any type of user input, we just wanna say, hey, I wanna push this button and for this example, send myself a reminder in 10 minutes, which is one of the most popular flows that we can use. We now have a delay here for the count. We chose 10 minutes in our specific units in this case. You can change this up. This is just another action within our, our flow itself. And then you get a push notification, okay? Where are we gonna get it to? Um, it's either our, our cell phone, you can have it to whatever's connected out to this account here, and then you'll get that notification within this flow itself. So what we have once again is we start every single flow with our trigger. Okay, here's our trigger at the, tar at the start there. Okay, again, this is our manual trigger where we are physically pushing a button or deciding when this occurs, and then everything after it once again is an action. Every one of these is a specific action that we want to take once this trigger is initiated. Again, this case is a manual trigger. We decide when this happens. It's a user action, pushing a button, initiating this event. And then finally, our third trigger type is a recurrence trigger. Now, a recurrence trigger happens on a scheduled cloud flow. So what we mean by a recurrence is at a set interval, a set schedule, you will have this flow run, a scheduled date and or time for this flow to occur whenever you design it. So in this case, you can see in my recurrence trigger, it's going to run at nine o'clock, 9 a.m., Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, every single week. So every single day, this flow will kick off at exactly 9 a.m. Now, one of the things you can do with your recurrence triggers, if you edit this, the interval and the frequency, you can choose whichever you'd like. You can also come into your advanced options and change exactly how you want this to run. Right now, I've chosen to do mine in the Eastern time zone here in the United States, but you can choose any of the time zones that you would like to have within your schedule here. You can also choose which days to occur. Do I want it Monday, Wednesday, Friday? instead of every single day, well, all I need to do is select those specific dates. And now it's gonna choose that. Do I want instead of at nine o'clock to have maybe 9.30 in the morning? Well, I can do that as well. So you can choose that time here and the exact frequency, the interval that you may wanna have. And it's very simple to do in our 24 hour clock here to have everything set up for us. And then once this trigger is initiated at the set interval, at the set, um, time that we want to have, we can go ahead and include our action. So once again, with this flow, we have our trigger to start, which is here at the top. And then from that point, again, here's our trigger. From that point, we have our action. Anything beneath it here, these are all the actions taking place in the sequence that occurs for the rest of this flow. 
So as you can see, it's quite simple to go ahead and get started with your flow to go ahead and choose these. And in fact, it's even easier if we go back to our create page here, if we select that create navigation option on the far left here at powerautomate.com, we can choose the exact way we wanna start off our flow or to make it even easier for us, we can go through all of these amazing templates available to us to go ahead and choose those. In fact, the flows that I showed you today, all three of these are actually built from a template. Every last one of them I built from a template and just go ahead and went in and edited that template to make it exactly what I wanted to have within it. So even in this case, post the message in a chat or channel. I decided how I wanted that to work. I've added these in. I even added in my own specific message in that. So using templates and the trigger types together all at once is really a great way for you to really take everything you're doing within Power Automate here, every, every flow instance, every creation of a flow that you'd like to have, and really get it to be as specific as you may want. You can add in additional actions after every single trigger to go ahead and make that flow do exactly what you want and when you want to do it which is awesome, which is exactly what we need to help us out with all those daily mundane tasks that we just want to automate for ourselves. Well, thank you for joining me again today. Please remember to go ahead and drop a like, hit that subscribe button, keep coming back for more as I add in more and more videos to this series coming up in the future to give you all of our Power Automate basics to help you out with using Power Automate right away today. Also, as a reminder, take a look at our on-demand learning platform to, to go ahead and um, get into some of the classes that we have available, not just with Power Automate, but also with Power BI, Power Apps, and all of the other business platform uh, softwares that you have available, not just with Microsoft, but also outside of the Microsoft ecosystem. And even further, we are having our very own Power Automate Bootcamp coming out here this summer. So please stay tuned for that. Yeah, you'll be joining me in a four-day uh, series there that we have in, online here that you can take in order to get a full experience with Power Automate to go ahead and go from beginner to pro and know everything you can do and set up yourself to get all these flows ready to go with Power Automate. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.